So friends, have you ever asked yourself, what can be done about Judge Aileen Cannon's pro-Trump bias? Well, you can file a judicial misconduct complaint form. How? Let's talk about that, because justice matters. Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. So friends, Donald Trump compromised our national security by stealing classified documents, illegally retaining them, obstructing justice by refusing to return them, by defying a grand jury subpoena that required their return, and by violating our nation's espionage laws. He hid those documents in ballrooms and bathrooms in his Florida club, Mar-a-Lago. He compromised our national security, and now he wants the chance to do it all over again by retaking the reins of governmental power. And there's one person in particular who is giving him an assist in that regard. Judge Aileen Cannon is single-handedly depriving the American people of our right to a fair and timely trial of Donald Trump on those most dangerous criminal offenses he committed. And friends, I have to tell you, that represents a special kind of governmental insanity. What can we do about it? Well, we can roll up our sleeves and we can fill out and submit a judicial misconduct complaint form. And in a few minutes, I'm going to talk you through exactly how you can do that. But first, let's go back to some of the basics and figure out how in the world did we get here. Trump appointed Judge Aileen Cannon. Judge Cannon is presiding over a case involving a defendant who gave her her job, her lifetime appointment to the federal bench. That right there is an appearance problem. There's an appearance of conflict. There's the potential for a pro-defendant bias, a pro-Trump bias, a bias in favor of the very person who gave her this remarkable lifetime job, an appointment to the federal bench. For openers, that creates an issue regarding the legitimacy of these proceedings, but of course there's so much more. Judge Cannon had set a May 20th trial date, May 20, 2024, right? All good. But a couple of months ago, it became clear that that might not be a viable trial date, so she asked the parties, Jack Smith the prosecutor and Donald Trump's defense attorneys, for proposed trial dates. Jack Smith proposed July 8th, Donald Trump's lawyers proposed August 12th. It would have been easy for her to simply set August 12th. Heck, that is the date that was offered by Donald Trump's defense attorneys. But when she canceled the May 20th trial date, she said, and I will be setting no trial date. Why? Well, in part, it's because she failed to timely litigate and resolve some of the pretrial motions that have been sitting there for months. And now, due to her own sloth at best, her inexcusable neglect, she needs to cancel the May 20th trial date and set no trial date at all because, you know, just need more time to litigate these motions that I have let sit. So, Friends, let's start with what the federal law says, what the standard is regarding when a judge must remove herself from a case, when a federal judge must recuse. The federal code site is 28 United States Code, Section 455, Disqualification of Justice, Judge, or Magistrate Judge. And it says, any justice, 
judge or magistrate judge of the United States shall disqualify himself or herself in any proceeding in which his or her impartiality might reasonably be questioned. A judge shall, must, not discretionary, shall remove themselves from a case if their impartiality might reasonably be questioned. Not that they can't be fair and impartial, but if their impartiality simply might reasonably be questioned, they shall. They must recuse, remove themselves from the case, and let a completely uninvolved, fair, impartial, independent judge assume responsibility for the case. That's the only way that people can have confidence in the outcome of this trial. So let's have a look at what some of the experts in the practice of criminal law are saying about Judge Aileen Cannon's lack of impartiality, her pro-Trump bias. This from Salam. Headline, experts, Cannon's bias and incompetence threaten Trump case as she sets highly unusual schedule. And that article begins, it took U.S. District Judge Aileen Cannon almost a year to do what many observers thought was inevitable, kill just about any chance of Donald Trump being put on trial before the November election for allegedly stealing classified national security documents and refusing to give them back. Cannon, a Trump appointee who was selected last June to hear special counsel Jack Smith's case against the former president, began her Tuesday by pushing back a key filing deadline for the defense team to lay out what classified information it would introduce at trial. She then issued another ruling delaying a trial indefinitely. To set a trial date, Cannon wrote, would be imprudent and inconsistent with the court's need to fully and fairly consider the various pending pretrial motions, the Washington Post reported. An indefinite postponement, she continued, is consistent with Trump's right to due process and the public's interest in the fair and efficient administration of justice. The next scheduled conference in the case is set for July 22nd. That means there can be no trial before then. It was once scheduled to begin this month, May, and probably not before the voters head to the polls. If Trump wins the presidential election, he could have his hand-picked attorney general kill off the case altogether. Eric Holder, who served as U.S. Attorney General under former President Barack Obama, said Cannon's behavior has been downright disturbing, writing on social media that this whole process in the documents case has simply not been on the up and up. But while liberal critics are quick to point out that Cannon is overseeing a case involving the man who gave her the job she has today, there is an alternative explanation for her behavior. She is also highly inexperienced. As Reuters previously reported, she made several elementary mistakes in a criminal trial she handled last year, such as apparently forgetting to swear in the prospective jury pool and barring the public from observing the selection process, forcing her to later restart the whole process. But Ty Cobb, who served as legal counsel for the Trump White House before becoming a critic of the former president, told CNN there's no reason to choose between the two possible explanations for Cannon's handling of the classified documents case. Why not both? And this quote from Ty Cobb, who was a Trump White House counsel, quote, this is a combination of bias and incompetence, he argued. The things she has done here are really inexplicable, and it's tragic, he said, predicting that the case will not go before jurors until 2025, if it happens at all. Quote, I think it was always her objective, frankly, 
to prevent this from going to trial. Neil Katyal, former acting U.S. Solicitor General, argued that the case is not nearly as complex as Cannon has made it out to be, and that Trump is being treated far differently than any other defendant accused of stealing classified documents, including material related to battle plans and nuclear weapons. Appearing on MSNBC, he said he had lost any hope of seeing this trial take place before November. Quote, this decision and the handling of this case start to finish have been atrocious, Katyal said. This is not a hard case. It does not require the amount of delay that we've had. The case is pretty simple. A guy stole some documents. He hid them when the government came and looked for them. He lied and hid them. He continued, that's it. It's not rocket science. And yet, this judge has slow walked this thing to death. And friends, let me add one more from renowned constitutional scholar and Harvard Law professor Lawrence Tribe, who just posted, bingo, Aileen Cannon is acting more like an unpaid defense attorney than like a neutral judge. And she's not smart enough to conceal where her loyalties lie. She might as well be on Trump's legal payroll. Um, judge Cannon, your bias is showing. And your impartiality is reasonably being questioned, which is precisely what the federal law says requires you to step off this case. Okay, friends, now we're going to turn to how to file a judicial misconduct complaint form. And I'm going to do something I never in a million years thought I would try to do. I'm going to try to help us navigate a website and maybe a macro. I don't know if that's the right word. I am so bad with computers. I'm so bad with computers, I can't even spell IT. Thank you. I'll be here all week. Literally, I'll be here all week doing Justice Matters videos. But I'm intensely uncomfortable with all things having to do with the computer. But um, let's try to walk through it step by step. So we're going to talk about how you can go about filing a judicial misconduct complaint form for the way Aileen Cannon has disqualified herself from continuing to preside over the Florida federal prosecution of Donald Trump. And we're going to start by going to uscourts.gov, www.uscourts.gov. And once you're there, you're going to click on Menu. I told you this would be kind of my third grade approach to working through a website and a macro. Somebody can send me a comment and tell me if macro is the right word here or not. Not that I have the capacity to learn anything about computers. So you click on Menu. You then click on Judges and Judgeships. You then click on Judicial Conduct and Disability. You then click on Frequently Asked Questions, Filing a Judicial Conduct or Disability Complaint Against a Federal Judge. You'll see this page and you'll scroll down to number four, How Do I File My Complaint? And you'll then go to the form. Then you'll download the form. And at long last, if I have explained this correctly, you're now looking at the complaint of judicial misconduct or disability form. Now, friends, for the most part, this is self-explanatory, but let me give you some of the sort of details, some of the technical information you'll need to fill out this form. So it starts by asking you your name, your contact address, a daytime telephone number, the name of the judge, of course, is Judge Aileen Cannon. And then under number two, it asks the court. The court is the U.S. District Court for the District of Florida. Number three, does this complaint concern the behavior of a judge in a particular lawsuit or case? You're going to 
check yes, and it asks again for the name of the court, the U.S. District Court for the District of Florida, and then it asks the case number, and it is case number 23-80101-CR-Cannon. After that, it asks if you're a party or a lawyer, you're neither, so you can check the box neither. And then moving on to page two, you'll see section four, that's where you put your brief statement of facts. And friends, I won't tell you what to put in your brief statement of facts, but there are lots of news articles and other accounts out there about you know, not only how Judge Cannon has botched and, and mangled and mismanaged the case, but there's plenty out there about her lack of impartiality. So um, I'll leave it up to you uh, what to put in your brief statement of facts. What I will do is I'll put a link to the Salon article that I referenced a few minutes ago. I'll put a link in the description of this video because it has quotes from people like Eric Holder and Ty Cobb about their assessment of how Judge Cannon has been presiding over Trump's case down in Florida. And after you fill out the brief statement of facts, then section five is a declaration and signature, and you have to declare under the penalty of perjury that the statements made in this complaint are true and correct to the best of your knowledge, which is one of the many reasons I wouldn't suggest to anybody what they put in their statement of facts, but I would urge that you make sure it's accurate to the best of your knowledge. That's important. And then you're going to need to know how to submit it. So you can work your way back through the website or the macro, if that's the right word, and it will tell you how to submit it. And I urge you to do that just to double check me. But I'm going to cut right to the chase um, because I did that and figured out how to submit it and what you're actually urged to do is to print it out and mail it. And here is where you should mail it to. It is the clerk's office for the 11th Circuit Federal Court of Appeals. There's the address there, 56 Forsyth Street, Northwest, Atlanta, Georgia, 30303. So yes, friends, these complaint forms will go to the 11th Circuit Federal Court of Appeals. And that appeals court is quite familiar with Judge Aileen Cannon because you may remember a couple of years ago, it was the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals that reversed Judge Cannon for abusing her judicial discretion by doing something to the extreme benefit of Donald Trump that the law did not allow. The 11th Circuit had to reverse her previously for something that I would argue shows that she's not terribly impartial when it comes to Donald Trump. So friends, I'll finish where I started. I think it represents uh, an intolerable governmental insanity to let one conflicted judge, one judge whose impartiality might reasonably be questioned, orchestrate circumstances that would allow a defendant who stole classified documents, obstructed justice, violated our nation's espionage laws to the extreme detriment of our national security, orchestrate circumstances that will allow him to forego being tried for those crimes um, before he gets to try to retake the reins of governmental power and do it all over again. Don't we, the people, have a right to know when we're going to the polls in November if Donald Trump committed these crimes, if he's convicted of espionage and related crimes, if he badly damaged our national security? Don't we have a right to know that before we're put in a position where we're going to have to choose between presidential candidates again? It's governmental insanity that 
Judge Cannon is being allowed to orchestrate this. And the way we can prevent that is by urging the judiciary to take responsibility for a federal judge whose impartiality is reasonably being questioned, remove her from the case, and substitute a fair, impartial, independent judge whose impartiality cannot be questioned. That's what needs to happen. Because justice matters. Friends, I hope you have found this helpful. I hope I didn't do more harm than good trying to walk you through a website and a macro. Um, and I look forward to any comments you have, including constructive criticism about my you know, maiden voyage into talking about anything computer related after four years of posting nearly daily videos here on my Justice Matters channel. I always welcome your feedback, um, good and bad, particularly constructive criticism because I appreciate it and I learn from it. And um, I will ask you something that I ordinarily don't ask you. Please hit subscribe if you enjoy or find useful this daily content. Um, subscribing is always free and, and it does help. So as always, friends, please stay safe. Please stay tuned. And I look forward to talking with you all again tomorrow.